when entering a position, there is only one thing that we know, and that is what is our max risk. However, what if I told you you can minimize what your max risk is by using this one simple strategy? I haven't seen many people talk about this, but this is a risk management strategy that I have been using for years, and this is how I keep my losses to a minimum. But real quick, before hopping into the video, if you guys do find value, Make sure to smash that like button as well as clicking that subscribe and that bell icon. It would mean the absolute world to me. But without further ado, let's hop into the video. All right, so I preach all the time when we are day trading, we mainly want to trade when price is coming to our key areas. Now we can find these key areas through support and resistance, Fibonacci retracements, supply and demand, and so much more. I have tons of videos on my channel showing you guys on how to find those. So I don't want to dive too deep into that in this video. However, the main thing that we are actually going to be using is going to be the active trader on thinkorswim. Now, personally, when I use my active trader, I have this chart pulled up right here of the contract that I am looking to trade. Now, I put this on a one minute candle. So when price is trading near my key levels or price is coming back and retracing at a level. So looking at this example on SPY on Friday, we can see that we had this clear high of day that was acting as resistance. Now, once price was able to break through this resistance point, price then came back to retest the level. Now, this is typically what I would look for for a break and retest to go long. But how do we know what our max risk is in this trade, especially if we're trading options? Now, if we were trading futures, it's a little easier to understand because with futures, it only moves based off of points. But options, there's tons of different variables that come into play. So as we can see, price breaks and then it pulls back and it retests. What is our max risk on this trade? So the retest was at 523.73. What we would want to do is watch the 524 calls. Now, when price came back and retested at this level, which was 205 or no, 305 p.m., we can see that with this candle right here that broke below the support and reclaimed it, the contracts were trading at a low of 1.21. So at the very bottom of this candle right here, the 524 calls were trading at $121. Now let's just say that once price started to get back above the support and started to show strength above it, that is when you got long. So let's just say you got to fill at, let's just say 1.33. So you ended up entering this position at $133. Where is your invalidation point? Well, if price started to break below this low right here at 523.6, and started to show weakness, that would be the invalidation to tell you, okay, I should get out of this trade. So now piecing together the price action at that key level and understanding where the trade is invalid, well, if you entered at $133, you know that your stop loss is on the opposite side of this 1.21. Now you wanna give it a little bit of wiggle room, so I would say give it like an extra five to $10. So your stop would be around one point, what, 1 1.16 to around like 1.11. So let's just give it an extra $10 for simple math. You end up entering the trade at $133. At the low of this candle right here, the contracts were trading at 121. You can come and say, okay, my max risk on this trade is going to be at 1.11. So at max, you are going to be risking $22 per contract. Now from here, what you are going to do is you need to size in a way that it makes sense for you to be able to lose $22 per contract. So if you're only comfortable with losing $22, then you only take one contract. But if you're okay with losing $66, then you can go with three contracts. If you're comfortable losing $220, you can go with 10 contracts. But that's how you're gonna understand what your max risk is in a trade. I see a lot of people, they'll, they'll enter a position, but they don't actually know what their max risk is. This is the easiest way to understand and pretty much get a very accurate understanding of how much you are going to lose per contract. And then from there, you just size accordingly. So let's just go ahead and let's look at one more example. Let's pull up, um, I don't know, let's pull up Tesla. And if you guys haven't already, I highly suggest checking out my new book, The New Age of Day Trading, the ultimate A through Z trading guide that goes over my entire day trading strategy, 
sniper entries, the indicators I use, Fibonacci retracements, stop loss strategies, and so much more. So if you guys are interested in that, again, the new age of day trading, the ultimate A through Z trading guide officially on Amazon, the link will be down in the description. So let's just say with this Tesla example, you are looking to short at a lower high, maybe at a Fibonacci retracement. And let's just pretend that this was a really good Fib reject. So price was trading at 177.64. That was the area that you were looking for price to reject. Therefore, we would want to be watching the 175 puts. So as price traded up into that retracement zone, it was at 1050 in the morning. So now if we go ahead and we find 1050 on this one minute chart, that is going to be right around this area right here. So at the very high point of this Tesla example of 177.86, the contracts, the put contracts, were trading at a low of 4.15. So once price was trading up here, the contracts were being priced at 4.15. Now let's just say as price started to reject off of that level and started coming down and you started to notice, okay, this could potentially be our lower high, you ended up getting short. Let's just say you got a higher fill around, let's just do 4.5. So you enter the position at 4.5 and at the very high, these Tesla contracts were trading at 415. That's going to be a $35 difference. Now, again, you want to give it a little bit of wiggle room. With Tesla, I would give it more than $10. I would say probably like $10 to $20 on the opposite side. So in this scenario, you should size for your stop loss to be around 4.05 to 3.95 so we're just going to go with the higher example we're going to use 3.95 as your stop loss so you enter at 4.5 and your hard stop loss is 3.95 so at most you are going to be risking 55 dollars per contract now again this is going to depend on you as a trader how much are you actually willing to risk are you only comfortable with 55 Okay, well, if that's the case, you'll do one contract. Are you comfortable with 110? Okay, you can do two contracts, 550, do 10 contracts. But again, it depends on you and your account size. And as mentioned earlier, once I started using this in my option strategy, it's completely changed the way that I trade because before I didn't actually know how much I was willing to risk. But using this strategy, it helps me pretty much pinpoint exactly how much I'm willing to lose. Now also keep in mind, if you're trading a zero DTE option, you can get a rough guesstimate, but because they are zero DTEs, I would keep that in mind when entering the trade because zero DTE, they can decay a lot quicker compared to something that expires in a few days. But anyways, that's gonna wrap up this video on how to minimize your losses when trading using a very simple strategy by simply looking at the options chart. So as always, if you guys did find value in this video, make sure to smash that like button as well as clicking that subscribe and that bell icon it would mean the absolute world to me. And if you have any future upload suggestions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. Everybody have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next video.